Hey guys, this is Roy with Raven Television on location, still here at Daytona Biketoberfest. I'm here with Pastor Alex Hill of Raven Daytona. Pastor Alex, um, obviously um, it's really, really intense out here, the ministry and all that, but how's this progressed over the few years that you've been out here doing Biketoberfest outreach? Well, you know, it's like anything else. You see where the world is continuing to grow a little bit worse and worse. And the Bible says that because of iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. And that's what you really see. And you really see just a, almost an arrogance even with people. You know, I, I heard somebody say a statement, and they say this often. They say, oh, I'm going to hell anyways. But, you know, that really breaks the heart of God when you think about that. And you think about that they're saying, I'm going to receive the same punishment that Satan's going to get. I mean, that's just... And it didn't used to be that. You know, back in the, the 80s and, and even the 90s, there was still a respect for the gospel. But, you know, it's like anywhere else. It's progressively getting worse. However, we see God continue to move and save and bring people from death to life every single time we do this bike tour fest. Amen. I think it's an awesome outreach. Uh, but I actually, spending some time here in Daytona, I actually was just really kind of moved by the area itself. Uh, just walking around during the day and going into some neighboring towns. Uh, what does ministry look like here when there's not an event going on uh, compared to where you came from in Texas and New Orleans? Right. So what we do regularly, of course, you know, we always have our Friday night and our Saturday night streets. But um, one of the most areas that we hit is a place called Boardwalk. And at Boardwalk is a lot of families. Uh, of course, we do adopt a block where we do a lot of community things. We do a community dinner as well. And so we have a lot of ministry going on. But we, it, it's so much laid back here on different things that you can really just sit down and talk with people and have like one-on-one -on -one conversation. So on a daily basis, there's always someone to talk to, and that's in any city. You know, I mean, we encourage people to be a witness wherever you go, not just whether an event or like a Biketoberfest or a Mardi Gras. You know, be that witness in the grocery store, be that witness in the convenience store, be that witness wherever you go. So daily day, day-to-day -day things is just being that witness, seeing God move, doing the church thing, seeing God show up, We've got the back house guys going. I mean, it's just, you know, it's normal life. You work, it's real life stuff. You're, you, we don't take people out of the world. We let people experience the world and teach them how to deal with the world in a Christian view, so. Right, amen, and that's what Jesus said. He said, follow me and I will make you a fisher of men. Right. So it really is that discipleship nature being reproduced right. in the lives of those that we witness to or we bring into the church that is going to set them up for a victory that overcomes. Well, absolutely, you know? because here's what you do. Jesus grabbed them basically by the hand and said, come and follow me, and I'll show you how to do it. And so at first he showed them and they watched. And then as he watched, as they were watching, he said, now come and help me. And then as they're helping him, then he says, okay, now I'm going to let you do it, and I'm going to watch. And then eventually he just gave it to them and let them do it. So that's really almost the nature of ministry and, and really discipleship. Discipleship is you you let them watch you. You get them involved in what you're doing. Then you kind of step back and let them take over and do it. And that's really how Jesus did it. And that's really how I believe ministry should be done. Well, amen. Uh, you know, as as God continues to grow me, you know, in ministry and, and really pull me deeper into the realm of discipling others and and really just making me cautious of how I live my life because really it's that it's that example we set before people like yeah. Jesus set the example that's going to really carry weight with somebody it's not how much Bible I know or what degree I have you know men want to follow men that they can trust right so uh, as a pastor as a man when did you know at what age did you know that God had called you to be a pastor and not just the guy going around and setting up at events, preaching, and then leaving. Like, when did you know that that was your call? Uh, Texas, part of Pastor Way's church, it called Day Spring Ministries. The Lord gave me a specific scripture, and I think most people know it, in the book of John where he told Peter, he said this, he said, if you love me, you'll feed my sheep. And then in Jeremiah, he said that he would give shepherds after his own heart. When I read these scriptures, something just birthed in my heart. Something just burst. And I said, God, are you calling me to pastor? And right after that, Pastor Ray pulled me in the office and said, we feel like, you know, you've already been doing it. And as pastors, all you can do is recognize what somebody's already walking in. Right. And so I was already walking in that gift. And he said, we recognize this and we will make you as a pastor. So it, God birthed it in my heart. Men recognized that. Then God put it in my heart. So, you know, fast forward. Here we are in Daytona. Pastor Ray's leaving to go to New Orleans just to redo the work there to how, finish how it. How many years later? Oh, my goodness. How many years later? Uh... That was probably about seven, eight years later. Here we are now in Daytona. He's leaving, right? And now uh, God says, now it's your time. 
And now it's time for you to do it. Now, I've always lived with Pastor Troy. I want you to understand, he, where he's win, I went, I followed him. I, right. I did the work with him. This time, God says, stay back. And so it was something new for me to step back and step in that role as shepherding. And I like to use the word shepherding more than even pastoring right. because it really almost speaks the heart of God when you say shepherding. And so it really called me to be that shepherd to tend to the flock. And God birthed in my heart. And then here we are, just have a few people in my living room and, right. you know, and, and just pour into people. And so from the time I got ordained as a pastor in 2001, you know, now it is a 2015, wow. you know, it was uh, four years ago, about 2010, somewhere around there, whenever I just stepped into the, to the pastors. Oh, it takes a while. Yeah. You know, a lot of people want to do it so quick, but Absolutely. you got to learn patience. You got to learn to allow God birth it in your heart at the right time. So, yeah, I learned quickly that shepherding, as you put it, you know, um, which is really that care for the people that God has given you, you know, charge over cannot be faked and it can't be rushed. You know, you might be able to learn how to orate really well and, and uh, you know, maybe even uh, impress a congregation, but to be that person that people can trust in season and out of season is something I've learned by watching guys like you, Pastor Sam and Pastor Troy, that can only come from the Lord. It's not something that comes from our, our carnal nature. We're selfish by nature. Right. Without the character of Christ, we are self-preservating you know, self creatures. So. Uh, I learned quickly that that call is serious and it comes from God. Right. So knowing that the call is serious and that he's called you to that, where do you see uh, the ministry in the upcoming years? What, what's, what's God's vision that he's given you for Raven Daytona? Well, let's, let's just take it out in this, this standpoint. Obviously, we're going to disciple and we're going to train up. And eventually, I believe God's going to raise up men where we can do something. You know, you... We talk about having great churches, you know, but great churches have to have great people and great people have to have great character. Yeah. And so if we, if we can stick to getting people great character, yeah. God will produce in them to make them great people and then we'll have what we call as great churches. Right. So all, we want to see God raise this ministry up where we are a substantial number where we can then later go ahead and plant another church. And now, when is that going to happen? Who knows? It's in right. God's timing. <laughs> However, we just believe that's the next, you know, the next place. And we want to have dynamic ministry. You want to do with excellency. We want to do children's church and nursery and every little thing. People forget about those little things. Yeah. But he says, if you'll be faithful over the little, I'll make you rule over much. Wow. And so there's that whole character being faithful with what God's given you. So what we're going to do, we're just going to be faithful with what God's given us. We've always done this. I keep doing what we're doing. And, and the pattern is worked. Right. It's, it's pattern after the book of Acts. It works. Amen. And we see God birthing not only in my heart, but the young men and other ministers, and God is moving people here to birth that pastoral shepherd heart to begin to take care of the flock. That's what's been missing, really. Right. Really missing that that shepherd's heart for the people. And people have been wounded by the church. They've been absolutely devastated. You see all these things happen. But let's change that. Yeah. Let's change that view. Let's start making something where people could say, this is what church is all about. Amen. This is what the, the, the house has got bread in it again. Amen. And then we build them up and give them character and let them take the ministry so right. we work ourselves out of a job right you've probably on. heard people say yeah, that absolutely. but we work ourselves out of a job and yeah. we train men and women to pick up the ministry and do what god's called them to do so. change lives change lives yeah. amen so pastor alex thank you for your time thank you. we'll be praying for you as always and we hope to see you again soon absolutely. hey guys this is roy with raven television we just ask you to always keep us in prayer and stay tuned ask you to like our uh, facebook page raven studios or hit us up on youtube also at raven studios and you can follow me on Twitter too, at Raven Roanola, if you have any comments, suggestions, or prayer requests. Until then, uh, keep praying. God bless.